welcome to Urban S. Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tan Sil, and today I'm going to show you an unconventional way to make soup in the oven and not on your stovetop. Stay tuned. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. Or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself. Protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Hi, welcome back to Urban S. Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and like I said, today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious oven-baked soup. Yes, I said oven-baked, because we're not going to let the soup cook for hours on the stovetop. We're going to put it in the oven and make it kind of like a stew, but it's actually a soup. And so we're going to be using a cast iron pot, which we can actually use on an induction cooktop. And so I'm just going to turn this on. And we're gonna put that at about 320 degrees. And we're going to heat up our cast iron cook pot. I'm going to add some olive oil to the cook pot and let that heat up. Okay, so now we've added our olive oil to our cast iron pot and we're going to let it heat up just a little bit. We don't really need to let it heat up a lot, but you can kind of see that you can see a little smoke and olive oil actually heats very quickly. So I'm going to add our onions and these are chopped into a dice and it also has some celery. And both the onion and the celery are sliced very thinly because we want small pieces in our soup. You don't want a lot of big chunky pieces of onion or of the celery. So I'm going to toss this around in the olive oil to coat all of our vegetables. And this is our flavor base. So we're going to let this caramelize for a second. Okay, so our vegetables have got a nice little caramelization going. And that really didn't take long. When you use an induction cooktop, your cooking time has been reduced quite substantially. The main thing is that you have to make sure that it doesn't burn because induction cooking, make sure that the heat goes from the unit to the pot and not on the surrounding surface. Now, one little thing that I really like to do to my beans and my baked soups, because I'm not a, a, a vegetarian, I do like chicken, and I do like chicken flavor when I'm making my beans and peas. Now, this is an option. If you don't like to have meat in your beans or your peas, then you don't have to do this step. But because I do like chicken flavor, I am going to do this step. And I have a chicken wig that was left over from a previous meal. And this is a great way to add a little flavor to your food. Now you can add chicken stock, but I prefer to add the chicken itself because you have the bone, you have the skin, you have the meat, and that all combines to add a great chicken flavor. And so you don't want to do this before your vegetables have caramelized because it will slow down the caramelization process. So right now is a very good time to add this in because the juices from the chicken will also start to cook and you'll get some of that flavor in the food as well. So I'm just going to add that chicken thigh and that leg and I'm going to let this heat up a little bit. The chicken is already cooked so you really don't need to let it cook anymore. This is almost like when you have greens and you add a, a ham bone or if you add smoked chicken. This is adding that flavor. You don't necessarily have to eat the meat, but if you just like the meat flavor, like I do sometimes, I don't really like to eat the meat all the time, but I do like the meat flavor. And so I am going to let this warm up and I'm going to toss it around and I'm going to let that chicken flavor mix in with our onions and mix in with our celery. Now I haven't added the seasonings and spices to this just yet, because I wanted to make sure that everything was caramelized. And sometimes if you add your spices in too soon, you might burn them, and we don't want burnt spices. And this is actually a southern way to make beans where, you, where you're adding uh, the meat to it. So at this time, what I'm actually going to do is add our spices to this. And this is actually um, a 
spice mix that I like, which is a little bit of paprika, some cumin, which actually goes along with lentils because it's kind of it's a Middle Eastern spice. Uh, it's a Middle Eastern spice. And now we have rosemary, and this is some fresh rosemary that I got from the store today. And so I thought that that would add a wonderful flavor to it, and actually just all smells wonderful. And I'm just going to let that toast and infuse. And actually, this smells really terrific. I wish we had smell o vision Okay, so one thing that I'm going to do today that is a little bit different is instead of adding water, I am going to add a tomato stock. And that's because I like the tomato flavor, and I don't want the water. Any liquid that you add to this is fine. If you want to add a chicken stock, that's fine. If you want to add a beef stock, whatever type of soup or stock that you would like to add, feel free to add that. Okay, so I added my tomato stock, and I've uh, stirred it in with the chicken, and it's actually looking and smelling very good. Now what I want to do is bring this to a boil before I add my lentils to it. Because you don't want to add lentils to a cold liquid because it's going to make the skin tough. And if you do add any type of liquid to this, make sure it's warm because that will toughen the skin if you notice that your, your soup is lacking a little bit of liquid and you want to make it thicker, or thinner rather, and add some water that's warm. Don't add cold water. Okay, so now I have my chicken thigh and my leg in my broth, and I'm going to let it simmer a little bit to let the flavors just kind of mix together before I add the lentils in. So I'm just going to let this heat up a little bit. I'm going to cover it so that we don't lose any of our flavor, and once you start seeing a little steam come out, that means that it's ready for the lentils to go in. But one thing I do want to show you about lentils. When you take them out of the bag, you have to clean them. Now you might think that they're clean coming out of the bag, but you, you want to make sure because sometimes these things have little tiny stones in them. And take it from me, you don't want to bite down on a stone that was in a bag. So we're going to actually clean our lentils first. Okay, now we've added our lentils to some water and we're just going to swish it around. And when we're swishing it around, what we're doing is we're cleaning off any type of dirt that might be on the lentil, and we're also checking for small stones. Sometimes you actually can check for small stones by putting them on a uh, on your tabletop or on a in a bowl, and you just kind of shift through it and make sure that there are no small stones in there because I've bitten down on a stone that was in some lentils before, and you really don't want to do that. So just make sure you take the precautionary measure of making sure that there are no stones in your lentil. Okay, so now once you put your lentils in the water, you're going to swish it around to make sure that they're clean. And you're going to notice that the water gets a little bit cloudy. And you're going to continue this process until the water is clear. So we're going to toss this water out and we're going to swish it around once more. And then we're going to strain the lentils and by that time, this should be steamed. Okay, so I've strained my water the first time and I'm going to do it again. Now, a tip that you might want to use if you're going to use a container like this in order to strain the water is get a little strainer like this or one that's bigger and you can just dump the whole thing in there. But that way you won't lose any of your lentils when you're pouring out the water in the sink. Okay, so. The lentils are strained and they're nice and clean and they are ready to add to our soup mixture. This actually smells wonderful. The chicken and the tomatoes and all the vegetables is a wonderful smell. I hope you try this at home. So now I'm going to add our lentils. And lentils actually don't take a long time to cook. So I'm going to make sure all of that's out. And in a previous show, I actually showed you how to do some roasted garlic. And this is actually a perfect opportunity to use that roasted garlic because you'll have a nice, robust flavor in your soup. And people will wonder how you got that wonderful roasted flavor in a baked soup. So we're just going to stir all of that in. And we're just going to cover this. 
we're going to turn up our induction cooktop and we're going to place the entire pot in the oven and let it cook. And this should take less than one hour to be ready for your soup. Okay, stay tuned and our oven roasted soup should be ready to go shortly. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner please. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hi, welcome back. Now, it's been almost an hour, and our lentil soup has baked in our oven and it's just about ready. So let's take it out and see how it's doing. Cast iron is very hot. You don't want to burn your hands. So remember to use your oven mitts. Our oven baked soup is a success. Our lentils are nice and tender. They have an essence of our baked chicken that I added into it. You can either keep the chicken or you can disregard it, but it's delicious as well. And you put that in a bowl with some cornbread or some rice and you've got a meal. You get the wonderful flavor of chicken. I can taste that roasted garlic that's in here that I made last week. If you need to see how to roast garlic, check out the previous show that said roasting garlic in your oven. You get that tomato flavor and you definitely taste that cumin that I added. Try this at home. You'll definitely enjoy it. If you have any questions, contact me on Facebook. This has been Chef Tish Tanso on Urban Esk Living. Have a good day.